Have we been engaged in a secret war against UFOs in Antarctica since 2004? Have we? And we know that Antarctica is a very secretive place. It is. And that um, there's not very many... Um, trips made by everyday citizens or people wanting to visit Antarctica. In fact, I think uh, militaries from all over the world and governments from all over the world, countries, have an interest in Antarctica. But really, has there been an ongoing battle uh, around the southern oceans in Antarctica? area that we know nothing about that's been kept hush hush has all that secret money you know how they they have a budget it's like a black budget and you don't know where that money goes you don't know where it goes has some of that money made its way over to this region right here have they really been at war with um, certain types of extraterrestrial interdimensional species uh, in their aircraft coming out of the ocean fleets of them coming out of the ocean. I think something's going on. I really do and um, I want to look into this. I, I ran into this Article which ran into something else. So I think it's quite fitting. I really do that. We check this out you all um, Hello, you heard the cabal um controls that okay that's uh that's interesting it really is let me let me come over here you all let's let you see you all you're on the screen we don't have very many people allowed in the chat even though i know a lot of people would love to get in the chat i wonder well, who determines who goes into the chat that's what i wonder welcome anyhow you all welcome so um you see the lizards, Christine Mott, honey. No, I don't mean 1954. I mean uh, 2004. I'm speaking of a, a much earlier time is uh, what I'm speaking of because that's what I, um, that's what my search results. Susan, honey, you've got me on here. You've come every video. Thank you, Susan, honey. Yes, yeah, so um, I did a search. This is what my search entailed. I did a, a query uh, June the 20th of 1985 through June the 21st of 1998. So it's important to know how I got here. It is for those. And um, I just started streaming down through here. You see the, all the different headlines and stuff like that. Um, July the 9th. So I did something like that. But let's look at this. So I fall into this article. Some very strange things occurred on July the 11th of 1991. And you can see that this article is written from September the 16th of 2016. Now, um, if we remember earlier today, 2016 also came up during something that we were talking about and I'm thinking why 2016 but it did it was like a like a great change happened so strange mystery UFO mysteries we got this eclipse right here good evening you all welcome one recent day in history stands out as odd on July the 11th of 1991 a wave of unexplained UFO sightings occurred over Mexico City the events were witnessed by thousands of people and investigated by the Mexican government. Coincidentally, the UFOs were seen during a so total solar eclipse. Um, so that's um, a total solar eclipse in Mexico City. And you have thousands of people witnessing UFOs being seen. Let's go back to the story the account during the eclipse the people in Mexico City reported large metallic disc in the sky the object was first videotaped by multiple people 
and broadcast on the news. The event was one of the first widely reported UFO sightings in Mexico City since that time. The area has become a hotbed for unexplained activity. The connections between the solar eclipse and the UFOs have caused some to speculate that the aircraft were predicted by the Dresden Codex of the Maya calendar. The calendar identifies the July 11th eclipse of, as the sixth sun of Quetzalcoatl and says it will bring about changes and cosmic awareness. So let's see this, you all. In 2010, a story appeared on the internet that the suggested United States was keeping the events of July the 11th of 1991 hidden from the public. It also suggested that the U.S. government was fighting a secret war against aliens near the continent of Antarctica. So, um, did you all ever hear of that? I've never heard of that, uh, of anything like that happening uh, on July. Well, I was in Berlin. No, I was, I was leaving Berlin. I, where was I? I was on my way to Nevada, July the 11th of 1991. You all, that's a long time ago. Did you, you didn't hear about it? Um, Pat Kelly UFOs attacked a place in Mexico in 2004. Okay, that's, um, that's a wonderful, um, 2004. So yeah, I wasn't into UFOs back then, but let's look at this. You are, cause this is, this, I think, I think we're going somewhere with this. I really do. So what evidence do we have concerning the other strange events of July the 11th of 1991? On July the 11th of 1991, the citizens of Mexico City looked to the sky to see a solar eclipse. But instead, many people saw a UFO. Guillermo Aragon, a reporter, and James Masson, a journalist, were videotaping the eclipse when they saw the metallic object. When James showed the Aragon footage on a TV show a week later, thousands of people called in to say that they had seen a similar object on that same day. And several also sent in videotapes of the UFO. Eric Aguilar also claimed to have seen the object while setting up his video camera to film the eclipse. About 60 miles away at the same time, a businessman named Luis Lara videotaped an object almost identical to the one that Eric taped. The Brenton family also filmed a similar object 80 miles away. In this video, there was an odd wave-like disturbance behind a pulsating disc, possibly an energy trail. Despite being 100 miles apart, the objects in the videos were very similar. Then two months later, another sighting of UFOs in Mexico occurred during a military air show. I'm going to put the link of this down here. I'm not going to click into the video because it's a YouTube video and you can watch the video. It's very old footage. I looked at it myself and um, it um, you can see it right here. I'm not going to click into it, but you can look into it. So and then now let's look at this. Then this story goes on. A report circulating in the Kremlin prepared for um, President Medvedev by the Russian Space Forces, 45th Division of Space Control, says an upcoming WikiLeaks release of secret U.S. cables details that Americans have been engaged since 2004 in a war against UFOs based on or near the continent of Antarctica, particularly the Southern Ocean. According to this report, the United States went to its highest alert level on June the 10th of 2004 after a massive fleet of UFOs suddenly emerged from the Southern Ocean and approached Guadalajara, Mexico, barely 1,600 kilometers or 1,000 miles from the American border. And prior to reaching the U.S. border, however, this massive UFO fleet is said in this report to have dimensionally returned to their southern home base. So we got this. Um, let's 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 look where the Southern Ocean is. Let's let's see if it's going to take us to Antarctica. 
Okay, that's the um, Google Earth. Let's zoom it out a little bit. Southern Ocean looks kind of pretty. Um, it does. Let's um, close you out a little bit. This is the Southern Ocean in Antarctica, and it's rather crowded, clouded over. But it, it does. It encases the whole area. This is what I found strange today. I've been looking at this area right here in the middle of the Southern Ocean. And it's just, it was started as a triangle and it's just stayed like this, this shape right there in that area. So let's, um, let me put this back to me. You can see the image right beside me um, of the Southern Ocean that surrounds Antarctica. And um, do you think that inside Antarctica there's a base or a massive um, kingdom? Do you think it's like one of the points to journey to the center of the earth in Antarctica. Um, I think it would be far-fetched for us not to believe that there was other life form that existed other than us human beings, mankind. And um, I think it's very probable that they do have life form, life forms, species, uh, other intelligent life forms at Antarctica I don't think you would have all the armies of the world, uh, all the different countries of the world having an interest and a representative there at Antarctica if there wasn't something there that they wanted to represent their country with. Okay, I, I really don't think because, you know, it's like envoys and diplomats and stuff. You have them in various places. And I'm sure this is no different, but then that's what this report said there was a, a war u.s was engaged in a war since 2004 2004 the fears of the americans regarding the southern ocean ufos began during the unprecedented events of july the 11th of 1991 referred to as 7 11. you all i did not know that did you know that a 7 11. It's really interesting. When the solar eclipse, these mysterious aircraft appeared by the hundreds over all, nearly all of Mexico, even their capital city. Um, most notable events of 7-11 were that as millions of Mexicans were watching on their televisions, the national broadcasts of these UFOs over Mexico City, the American media refused to allow their people to view it. These, that's dirty. That's really dirty. Thanks a lot. Uh, because I think people in the United States would have loved to seen that and had that information. Thanks a lot. Well, now we're just now getting it because you hid it from the American populace. That's what you did. Um, that's right. Um, so somebody got in here. Um, Susan B. Honey, you're doing great. You all, Susan's doing really good in here. So I never knew that. Um, yeah. So look at that. It was known as 7-11. On July the 11th of 1991. Millions of Mexicans were watching on their televisions as these UFOs were broadcast over Mexico City. That's, that's interesting. So we went there. And again, you all can watch that link to this YouTube video right there. I've already put that in here so you can see the link. 80% uh, of the fresh water is in um, Antarctica. Um, what else did I click into? Okay, I, I did. I've, I, I clicked into this, you all. Let's come over here. How we doing over there, Susan, honey? You're doing a wonderful job. You really are. And, um, yeah. Antarctica has tunnels uh, by the Rothschild family. Well, they could be alien, too. They really could be aliens is what they could be. I just want to look at this. So Buzz Aldrin is in, went to Antarctica. A lot of people went there. Um, yeah. Okay, let, let's put this back to me. Let's come over here because we got, we got some stuff to cover. So we're going to cover it. So we've got this video right here. This is just my search engine. 
uh, that pulled this up. Y'all, let me put this search here so you can see the exact same search. Someone said, Gina, honey, while you're doing this, um, they don't put the links in that you put in here. Well, I can fix that. I really can because I can go in here. And that's what I will do, you all. I'm going to put the links in here also. Um, I'll put that link. And um, I can put this link right here, too, because this is you all, you all can have this link because you all said that the links disappear. Uh, if I put it in the description, hopefully it will stay in there. All right, now let's go back over here to this right here. Uh, it's all connected. So UFO Fleet. Uh, June the 10th of 2004, uh, Guadalajara. Um, I think we saw Guadalajara. My nose was itching. Somebody's talking about me. So, um, yeah, what else I did is um, I found these images. So let's look at this, you all. UFO fleet in Mexico. See, this is a YouTube video that was done. Guadalajara. This uh, There's all these links. Let me put this here so you all can... Um, also see the image leak the image um, things on here we can that way they'll be right there in one spot for you all to see the images and they do have the ufo videos in there the videos and stuff like that will save it i hope it is going to save for you i really do and um susan honey thank you because somebody asked me that in the comment section and i most definitely can do that i can and i and i and i will so yeah that's that's really important that way i don't have to keep track of them so look at this the monkey buddha video of huge ufo fleet over mexico so let's see what this might um, pop up okay so we've got uh, july the 13th of 2005 well that kind of looks like um look like those ones that come out of the sun but let's look at it it was seen by thousands of people uh and it was broadcast on mexican televo television stations they caught hundreds of UFOs hovering over in the sky. Um, yeah. Um, Christine Seidman, I can I can put links in the chat too. I'm just going to put them um, in here. I'm just putting them right here in the description, so that's fine. So um, there's no comments. No comments there. I guess that um, this wasn't even meant. I'm not going to look at that. Okay, I'm not. I'm just going to come back to these images right here. We can see it. All this is that. Alien lore n number, uh, a new whatever revealed. I didn't hear anything about these. You know, I've heard of the Wiki WikiLeaks before. Ancient civilizations. Um, I doubt if it was one of these. Because, you know, this is, e this is in, in, you can't even tell what that is. And know, you know they got better images than that. Much better images. So, um, yeah, you might find something in here. You really might. Conceptual marketing. We don't look at look at that. Okay, but that's, that's fine. Let's get out of the images, you all. We're just going to come back over here. They got something on the Facebook. If you got a Facebook update on UFOs, let's see what the rents.com uh, had to say. Um, on the June the 10th of 2004 in the city of Guadalajara, witnesses undoubtedly the most spectacular UFO fleet sighting in known history. Uh, at 12.30 p.m., the sky over the city became filled with hundreds of sphere. Sphere-like objects uh, grouped together in a massive formation and all moving in unison like a spectacle straight from a major Hollywood sci-fi Scene uh, Operation High Jump. The number of luminous spheres was in the hundreds, and among them, in a certain spot within the formation, was a much bigger craft, a mothership, a disc shape, which might have been controlling the whole armada. So Guadalajara. At 12:30, Miguel uh, was shocked to see the spectacle in the sky and took his camera uh, to record the stunning event. And the result was a truly incredible video uh, lasting for several minutes, showing an astonishing parade in great detail. As the day was very clear, the clouds contrasted the formations. At the same time, someone else saw some. Uh, you can't really see it that well because this is uh, really old. Uh, the viewfinder, incredible sighting, Miguel Aguila. 
there he is, um, the big disc. While taping, Miguel noticed a bigger object among the formation, a different shaped object highlighted because of its size. It was not a sphere shaped like all the others, but seemed different. So he applied a zoom and made a good shot, revealing its shape clearly on tape. It was obviously different because of the disc shape, white color and definitely bigger. Um, he was wondered if this bigger craft could be in some way the leader of the entire group. He said it was awesome. On national television, you all, we didn't hear nothing about it. It's not right. It really isn't. Um, so they did a, a meticulous study of the possibility of balloons that was discarded. Come on, you all. They, they got to get rid of those balloons. They really do. Uh, the case and the videos was released by Jamie uh, Masson on a national television and all Mexico ufologists as well as the viewing audience were stunned seeing the images by Miguel and Miguel Aguila and Miguel Dominique Dominquez. So um, this is interesting. He kept the camera rolling and recorded exceptional evidence. Uh, and it's one of the most intriguing and important graphic documents in UFO history. A day that will certainly be remembered by the Guadalajara citizens as the day when they received a colossal visit from some distant place in space. So look at that. A complete investigation was made on this case and the is incident is still unexplained. You Well, that is not unexplained. They know exactly what happened. They do. Um, they may just be saying, well, they are just saying that, you all. They're just saying it. So, look, we have right here. What is, what is this? A fleet of UFOs followed a U.S. aircraft, Navy pilot says. Uh, it airs on the History Channel. Oh, these are 22, okay, UFOs flying over Illinois. So that's Illinois, you all, but look at this, um, a quest for a long buried truth about a UFO. Oh, you can see all of these links right here. Something about the Phoenix Lights. Uh, if you live there, the aliens are coming, the Irish Times. What's that about, you all? What is that about? Um, it's all over the internet. So it must be true. The aliens will be invading the earth within the next 18 months. And they reckon, uh, well, they, um, I, I don't think they invaded unless they are inhabiting bodies. This is from um, 1996. You know that they have bit rot that occurs on the internet. Bit rot. It's when there's articles from years ago. Um, they, they get corrupted and then they're gone. There's no more links to them. Any like, um, information documentation and stuff from uh, quite a few years back it they some of them get corrupted and it's bit rot there's no links to them no more no nothing it's like it literally disappears into this space there's no hard copies for people to see it's all digital and it li literally gets bit rot um Let's see this. So it's all over the internet. Uh, there's no need to worry. Top level international military is preparing to fight back against the extraterrestrial aggressors. Um, this is New Mexico of 47. Um, <laughs> uh, they want to blow up the invading um, aliens out of the galaxy. You uh, Come on now. Independence Day. Um, why do they have to say UFO occultist? This person writing this does not um, sound really good there. I don't, I don't even want to look at that. The Tibetan, the Tibetan Book of the Dying are weighing this. I'm not write, reading an article by somebody who has a, a negative behavior, a negative tone to it. I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, so, yes, yeah, so you can, you can do your own searches, you can, beyond imagination. But the main thing I wanted to come on here for is uh, during a total solar, solar eclipse, they saw a large metallic disc in the sky, and it was videotaped. Um, and the, UF, the governments uh, of the Americans have been at war with... Um, 
UFOs since 2004, this says, and they had their 7-Eleven, like the 7-Eleven stores, uh, is what it sounds like, 7-Eleven. All we have to do is, let's see if we can um, type in um, UFOs in Antarctica. And arc yeah this is kind of hard to spell it <laughs> Antarctica it really is kind of hard to spell it man baffled on spotting a UFO in Antarctica UFO war in Antarctica is it fact or is it fiction and is a UFO exposed on Google Earth due to ice melting yeah all of that UFO and Ant Antarctic bases. So, um, I didn't hear about any of this, you all, but yeah, you can look that out. I don't think that's in there. Really, you think this, these discs, they could be in a Antarctica. They could. And uh, if they're like this, and it is, um, I guess it's uh, Hitler was in contact with um, things like this. UFOs. Well, I don't want to look at his face right there. You are, we got to cover up his big eyes. We <laughs> really got to... His eyes are very piercing at me, and I don't want to look at his big eyes like that. I, I don't. So was he building an advanced UFO in Antarctica? What was he? Yeah. Um... And you know what? There's more than this type of UFOs that are spotted in the sky. There is. There's more than that type. Let me put this back to me, you all. I am going to... I am going to be going because um, that's... Uh, that's one of the things that was said in a war... Engaged in a secret war against UFOs since um, 2004. But why? Why? Someone found it. Somebody found something. Hello there, Apple Brooks and <laughs> Christy. <laughs> Apple Lee. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny, Christine. Yeah. Even sick in bed, your videos are entertaining. Oh, thank you, Michael Marcello. I hope you're feeling better. I was so sleepy earlier. I thought, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? Really, what is wrong with me? If I'm so sleepy. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so why would we have a global seed vault in Antarctica? There wouldn't be any reason to have one, right? They also had one in uh, Aleppo, Syria. Wow, I didn't know that. There was a lot of fighting in Aleppo. Um, and let's, let's look at this. I want, I want to know about this global, s what do you, what do you, what's popping up here? Okay, I'll accept it. Okay, so the global seed vault in the remote high Arctic archipelago of Svalbard, some 800 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Um, seeds from around the world lie dormant, safe and secure into a biological Noah's Ark. Svalbard is unlike anywhere else on Earth. Its outstanding wildlife and nature attract explorers from around the world. And uh, people arrive in winter to witness the beautiful northern lights dance across the sky. And uh, in the midnight sun brings 24 hours of daylight. They don't even realize that it's an important treasure trove that is crucial to our planet's survival. 
uh, and it's housed unseen within a magical landscape. Did you all know that? In case of an emergency, um, more than a million seed samples of crops from all around the world lie locked away in a cool, dark, dry vault deep inside a mountain created by the Norwegian government. Okay, Nor Norwegian spiral, you all remember that? The Norwegian spiral. Um, in 2008, this is the world's largest secured seed storage facility, able to store up to 4.5 million varieties of crops. This all-important seed vault carefully preserves seeds from trees, plants gathered from all over the world. In case of natural world or man-made disasters on a local, national, global scale, trees and plants could be grown again rather than lost forever. It's a true Noah's Ark for biodiversity and insurance policy for future life on the planet. So far, only one incident has created the need for backup seeds after an attack in Aleppo during the Syrian Civil War. Um, the International Center for Agricultural Research in the dry areas was housed there and it was destroyed. A collection consisted of 148,000 seeds. I think they, no, let's, let's talk about it. They didn't, I don't think it was destroyed. I think that they took it. I think they took the seeds from that place. It would make total sense to take the seeds from that place in, in Aleppo. Okay, because that was a very, um, it was a global seed vault. But who took it? Who took it? That's way too fishy, you all. Way, way, way too fishy. To, um, are we stuck on this one picture? Um, let me, let me see this. I hope we're not stuck on this one picture right here. This one video. Okay, we're not. So who took that? I, I, I don't think it was destroyed. I really don't. Just like all the art, artwork and all these uh, historical things uh, in Iraq. I don't think it was like, I think somebody came in and took it. And so they took all these seeds right here. Oh, thankfully, 80% of those seeds have been duplicated and sent to the vault in Svalbard. That's right, you all. Picking the perfect position. Why a Svalbard, the archipelago's remote location of the vault? We're talking about Antarctica. Uh, has much less human interference, which could range from vandalism, conflicts, or accidents. Well, let's, let's think about why you stuck it there in Antarctica. You stuck it there in Antarctica because uh, it's protected. Nobody's going to come to Antarctica and um, battle these UFOs that are there, this race of beings that are there. You stuck it there because you made an agreement. Uh, that yes you would do this and you would put the seeds there and um yeah i think they made an agreement and i think they put it there knowing that nobody else would get it right there in antarctica that's what i think um it provides the infrastructure to receive new seed shipments and uh, engineers so, so they got all the important people there to properly preserve the seeds, the rooms are kept in a vault uh, at a standard temperature of negative 18 degrees Celsius with low humidity. It has a natural permafrost, meaning that even in the case of power outages, the vault would stay cold enough to keep the seeds frozen. In 2017, the melting permafrost seeped into the vault due to climate, <laughs> due to climate change. <laughs> Thankfully... None of its samples were damaged. The vault was promptly upgraded to no longer rely on the permafrost to keep the seeds cold. Despite the incident, it is still considered one of the safest places in the world for long-term seed storage. Of course, because it's protected by these extraterrestrials, you all. It looks really pretty. Um, that's what I think. <laughs> it's protected. Um, chronicling. The construction opened in 2008, you all. Look, the Nordic Gene Bank, the Nordics, um, agricultural and horticultural crops established a safe storage facility for Nordic plant seeds 
um, groove three, which is located on Mount Plagderga Bolt, close to where the seed vault is today, you all. Ah, oh, look at this. The Interna International Plant Treaty was established in 2004. How coincidental, you all. Isn't that coincidental? coincidental? Because, um, <laughs> according to uh, this uh, Russian report, the United States went to its highest alert level on June the 10th of 2004 after a massive fleet of UFOs suddenly emerged from the Southern Ocean, uh, which is uh, near um, the Antarctica, surrounded by Antarctica, you all. Engaged since 2004 and against a war around Antarctica, the continent of Antarctica, 2004. So that's when they came in contact with the aliens. Let's call them aliens uh, with them. And um, this is uh, when this treaty was established in 2004 and kick-started the preliminary projects that finally became the Global Vault. That's right, you are Global Vault. It officially opened on February the 6th of 2008 with 2,000 guests attending the ceremony. I wonder with, with, um, if with the President Obama was there, did he attend the ceremony? Um, the guests were Norwegian Prime Minister at the time, Jens Stolenberg, and the Nobel Peace, Peace Prize, you are. 2004 was busy, you all. Let me see if Mr. Um, oh, let's see. Um, did he go to the seed vault? I just want to know if he did because that, that would be a very important uh, event. I spelt it wrong. It don't matter. It would it, fix it. Um, it didn't even like it. Um, it didn't like it at all. Nope. Well, we can see some more of that. We can. The world's most views, viewed site. Hot times. Uh-uh. Hot times near the volcanic range was discovered. A volcanic mountain chain. Um, 2008. Norwegian waters. Okay, so we don't want to look at that, but this is um, this is really interesting that um, a treaty, an international plant treaty, was established, and that's when they um, spotted those um, UFOs coming out of the Southern Ocean around uh, Antarctica, 2004. 200 guests. You know they're not going to tell all the guests that attended. Um, since then, gene banks from all over the world have continued to send duplicate samples of local seeds to preserve them for eternity. Every country owns their own seeds, you all. But if a global crisis were to arise, if, okay, they know it's going to arise, when the global crisis arises, the seeds will be available to everyone and when it first opened, the vault contained 278,000 seed samples, um, which were mostly rice and wheat. Rice and wheat. KM, honey, we, we not, we're not here to argue about humankind and mankind. We're not here. That's a, arguing over labels, okay? I just like to say humanity, okay? Humanity, yeah, we just... Humanity, you say what you want. We, it's all right. It's in the big scope of all, everything. It's all right. A year and a half later, um, it's quite all right. A year and a half later, it contained 423,899 samples from 219 countries. Today, there are more than 1 million, that's right, million samples in the vault. When going on an expedition, uh, you probably won't be able to see the seeds in the vault for yourself. It's quite difficult to get there as a visitor. It's top secret. The locals are more than happy to share stories. Um, yes, that's right. So that's really interesting. They, they came to an agreement. They had a treaty in 2004 when a fleet of UFOs came out of the ocean floor uh, from around Antarctica. A fleet of them came out. 
and um, it got the attention of the whole entire world uh, and went over New Mex- went over Mexico. However, United States people were not allowed to see the UFOs in the sky. Uh, we just weren't that privileged at all. Yeah. Um, so that's really interesting, you all, that you got this seed vault. Let me put this here because this is, um, I'm going to put this in the um, description right here instead of the the other thing because people say, you know, they um, they disappear when you put them down in there. Oh, I like that, Jay Ferris. You got all these types of fruits and stuff. That must have took you a long time to do that. It really must have took you a long time to put all those little emoticons of fruits and vegetables in there. That's cute. Yeah, it's cute. Um, that's right, you all. It is. Um, so, yeah. So, um, I think they, they know that they're here. And uh, they know that they cannot um, defeat them. They know they can't defeat them. Shocking alien fears force people from office. Really? I don't. I don't think nobody resigned. I really don't. Um, did he resign? Did Did Pope Benefic- Benedict resign? Whenever that was. The 85-year-old leader, did he? Uh, Because I I can't remember if he did. Yeah. Yeah. Mankind. Yeah, you can say that. Okay, and that's right. Faith and mankind. Um, They got alien kind and um, something like that, you all. That's all right, you all. It is. I I am going to be going is what I'm going to do. So, yeah. Engage in a secret war since 2004, but um, probably found out that they are no match for this uh, civilization that lives around and under Antarctica. I also saw today where it said um, there's like um, 20 eight dimensions other dimensions and we've only discovered four of them but there's a lot more according to physicists yeah that's right you all so um this is interesting you should check it out um because there was a battle that did take place if you're just um tuning in this was um right here Uh, July the 11th of 1991, a wave of unexplained UFO sightings occurred over Mexico City. Uh, They were seen during a solar eclipse. And um, there was some speculation that the aircraft were predicted by the Dresden Codex of the Maya calendar. Uh, The calendar identified uh, the July the 11th eclipse as the sixth sign of Quetzalcoatl. And says it will bring about changes and cosmic awareness. So, um, but in 2010, a story appeared on the internet that suggested the United States was keeping the events of July the 11th of 1991 hidden from the public. It also suggested that the U.S. government was fighting a secret war against aliens near the continent of Antarctica. And um, they didn't show it. They didn't. Um, So... Yeah, all of that right there. Let's see, and, you, and I, I put the link there so you all could see it. And the U.S. Uh, supposedly went on its highest alert level on June the 10th of 2004 after a massive fleet of UFOs suddenly emerged from the southern ocean and approached Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, the UFO fleet is said to have dimensionally returned to their southern ocean home base is what that was so i am going to go you all and um thank you all for your comments thank you moderators and um, with that being said hello wherever you are in any part of the world hello from my heart to yours love you um have a wonderful rest of your evening you all good night